the Ebola crisis that has taken the turn of uh, the uh, stigmatization against their children, uh, particularly in uh, their school's environment. Uh, and so I'm going to begin by uh, introducing Papa Drum, uh, who is the leadership here, and he will give you some remarks, and then we will um, move forward with regard to the parents who have been victimized and other community leaders who are here uh, representing uh, both the African community and the community in general. My daughter has been bullied last week about Ebola uh, with another uh, student, a, a girl like her. Um, when she came home, she told me, Mommy, um, I don't want to say the, the name of the student. Um, my one of the students uh, said that I have I have Ebola. And mommy, do I have Ebola? And I told her, no, you don't have Ebola. And Ebola is not something is funny. Ebola, who the people who has to have Ebola, they didn't choose to have Ebola, and they need help. I think the school system, they need to teach the children or the, uh, the, the parents need to see the children if they, they don't they don't teach their children about mm. what's happening mm. and how to get um, uh, 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 the, the step who can help the people who have the, the ever but not to teach their kids their children that about okay the African people they have a ever she was born and raised in, in here United States of America she's, she's a citizen mm. She's nine years old. She went to Africa when she was like two months. So that means she does not have no Ebola. And I told her, whoever uh, bully you about Ebola, trying to teach them, you know, the Ebola is not something. It's, a, it's funny. It's not funny. The people doesn't choose to have Ebola. And uh, the parents need to teach their children. The school needs to teach the children about this. Uh, is happening, and if we don't do anything about it, it's going to be like the let's say the children, they won't be learning nothing mm -hmm. because everything they learn is of Ebola or this this person has Ebola, this person has Ebola. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be close to you. at the gym. Mm -hmm. She was kind of coughing a little bit, and oh, don't be close to me because you have Ebola. So nobody's focusing to learn what they're supposed to learn. That's disturbing. That's disturbing the school. And my daughter, she's kind of um, afraid now. Every traumatized, every morning she be like, Mommy, I don't want to be, uh, uh, the two days before she, she woke up, she said, Mommy, I don't want to be, I don't want to die because of Ebola. I told her, don't, don't say that. You don't have Ebola. And even if, you know, if you have it, we didn't choose to if something happened, I'm not going to say I'm not going to have it, but the people who have it, they don't choose to have it. So we, we pray that this stops right here. I am a hairdresser. I do hair. Now the business is slow. I have a customer on Saturday. She came to me. She came from Connecticut. I've been doing her hair for a long time, so she knows me. She told me, I was coming. One of my friends told me, where are you going? I told her, I'm going to Harlem, get my hair done. She said, she, her friend told her, what? You go to the African people to get your hair done? You want to you wanna catch the Ebola? Mm -hmm. What's that mean? So, I mean, something needs to be done. Um, I had a conversation with the father, and he, she shared with me what, has, what happened in school. These, ki these kids, for the past couple of weeks, were being bullied. They went to that teacher, and they shared with that teacher that it, their kids were calling them and telling them that they had Ebola. Nothing was done about it. On Friday, the youngest kid, Amadou, um, he was in the gym. Um, the, the kids did not want to play with him. They said he had Ebola. He was assaulted in the gym. He was punched several times in his eyes. This led... So what ensued during lunch? During lunch, they were on the playground, um, and he was sitting by himself. 
Suddenly, these kids were yelling around him, Ebola, Ebola, Ebola. They then jumped him, kicking him, punching him, threw him to the floor. He screamed. His younger brother heard him scream from across the playground and ran over. And these other kids jumped on him as well and beat him. My question is, where were the administrators? Where was the school staff where all of this was happening? These kids are supposed to be in school and they're supposed to be safe. Today, I accompany Usman to the school along with the kids to talk to the administrators to find out what did they know. It was very unfortunate because they did not know much. They only, they, re, they only thought this incident happened to one of the kids when it was really two. So you're telling me one of the kids, after he was beaten, was left there to go back to school, to go back to the classroom afterwards. This is an unfortunate situation. This do not, this should not happen in this day and age. We are all New Yorkers. We are all U.S. citizens. These kids were born here. They're not immigrant. They were, they, they were born here. They went to a synagogue to learn French and to learn mathematics. And they came back here to continue their education. This do not need to happen to any one of our kids. This do not need to happen to anyone in the African community. So we're here today to stand up against it, to say that we are demanding city agencies, we are demanding elected officials to stand up and join with us and say, no Ebola. We will not accept rhetoric. We need, we, we, we need active programs put in place within these schools to teach the kids and to teach the parents also because these kids are obviously getting it from somewhere. We do not need any hate crime in our community. This, this Ebola thing it has impact many of us. Myself, I have friends and family that's back in Liberia that have passed due to this Ebola. So this stigmatization of Africans in the community at this time, we all need to join together at once and fight this Ebola, not only on the continent of Africa, but in the U.S. here. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. And, and all this, when you look at this, even the school, did the school do the right thing? Did the police was call to make sure this kid was taken care of? Those are the questions we all have to be able, because, you know, these are the big issues we have to come to the other people to Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. I just want to emphasize something. There was no incident report about this by the school. It seems to me that there's a big piece of negligence on the school's part for having not made a report about this. Yes, sir. Yeah, my question is directed to Charles. Has the school, after the meeting today, said they're going to follow up and do an investigation and introduce an incident report, number one? And number two, is the district attorney going to get involved? Well, um, we, we, we met with the school today at 8.30 in the morning. And uh, we met with the, with the assistant principal. We met with the dean. We met with the counselor. This was a group meeting. In the meeting, uh, they themselves was trying to find out what went on. Uh, there were no um, investigation that was done. There were no incident report. They said they will follow up. Up. Yes. Yes. up. I'd like to make, number one, I lived through, as so many of you did, the HIV AIDS uh, situation when it reached a boiling point, and at that time, ignorance and lack of information was such that people wouldn't drink from certain cups and restaurants, they wouldn't talk to certain members in the community, and, and a group was stigmatized at that time, if you recall. Mm -hmm. They would not talk, two groups actually, the gay community and the Haitian community were both stigmatized. Later on we found, or quickly we found, that there was nothing to fear, that in fact, it was not such an easy disease to, uh, to, 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 be, to, to contract. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not interested in doing the right thing, both here and abroad. And we have to take precautions, and our government is doing so. But we can't go around panicking, and in the process of panicking, hurting kids mm. who I understand go to school in my district in the Bronx, and hurting other people. These are children, first of all, as it's been, these are American citizens. Some of them have visited Africa maybe once in their life. 
we need information, and we need to understand that it is not a New York way of doing things, it is not an American way of doing things, it is not a human being, a humane way of doing things, to single out a group of people because somehow they're going to be contagious to you. That's just ignorance. People who know much better than we do, much more, have told us already that you really have to be in a certain situation to be in danger of being having this, this situation be contagious to you. It's not by walking in the street, it's not by going to a restaurant, and it's certainly not by attending classes with your classmates. So I would hope New York has changed that behavior. And secondly, I can tell you that as soon as we go back to Congress, the fight will, will continue there. The President has many things on his plate, but he has made this a priority, and he's trying to do both, both use even the military to help the medical uh, people in uh, the uh, African nations to fight this disease. And we will win. But in the meantime, we cannot allow bullying, we cannot allow stigmatization. And since I see Telemundo here, I'm going to take one second to say que tenemos que tener mucho cuidado. No podemos simplemente por miedo personal escoger a la comunidad africana como una comunidad que tenemos que echar a un lado o darle golpes como le han dado estos niños o discriminar en contra de ellos. Esta enfermedad es una situación que tenemos que vencer y lo vamos a vencer como seres humanos, pero no lo vamos a vencer eh, discriminando en contra de alguien o escogiendo a una comunidad. Mañana pudiera ser nosotros. You know, we who are from the Caribbean could be accused at any moment, I was born in Puerto Rico, of carrying some condition that other people would like to discriminate. So we have to be careful about that. Let's not do it. Let's stick together. We will beat this. We're better than that. Thank you, sir. Don't always, when you hear about a situation, look for broken bones or attacks or marks on a child. Look also for the fact that when you're discriminated, there's an emotional effect on you. And this is an emotional effect not just on these children, but on the whole community.